The Red Mercy store is now live. A link will be in the description. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new League of Myths episode. I hope you guys enjoy this episode and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button. But let's move into the first myth submitted by Volcano Strike. How would two veins or vise W interact with each other on the same target? This is something that I feel like most people, including myself, just completely overlook. If you're unaware, Vayne's W every auto attack or E ability will apply those rings under the target with the third one dealing bonus damage. But what if two Vayne's on different teams attack the same target? Well the results are quite wacky, in fact it's actually very glitchy. You're gonna see myself and the Vayne consistently alternate with our auto attacks and the visual effect is completely bugged, constantly showing two rings and now it's not showing any rings at all. So judging from this alone you can tell that it's extremely buggy and how it exactly works is very mysterious. So we continue playing around with this and what I've noticed is that it potentially is just a visual bug. So take a very close look at the video right now and you're gonna see as we put on the marks we're alternating attacks for the first few times but there I auto attack two times in a row instead of alternating and it happened to still proc my W. And here's one even more interesting. We do the same thing alternating auto attacks but as I slow it down. You see that my W procs on the golem even though there's absolutely zero indication of the rings around the golem. So it seems like the game might be registering the W effects onto the target but the visual effect is extremely buggy. Next up we have Vi and here's a small demonstration as to how her W procs look like on the target. We tested with Vi the same way we tested it with Vayne but it doesn't seem as buggy as the Vayne. So here we're constantly switching the auto attacks but the visual effect is also quite weird constantly staying at 2 stacks even though we've always been switching. And even when I attacked the golem 2 times in a row it showed the stacks as being 2 stacks 2 times in a row. So the only good thing about this is at least the stacks are showing on the target and are not just simply invisible. But that's not to say that this isn't as buggy as the vein one. So Riot may want to revisit this area. The second myth is asking can Skarner or Scion use their ultimate to either pull someone through the new gates on Summoner's Rift or just simply dash right through. So we are going to be testing this on blue team's gates because that's the team Skarner is on. The gates act as a simple wall towards enemy champions, so in this case Zed, and you can see Skarner was unable to pull him through the wall. But the way you walk through their gates tends to be very awkward, so I decided to try one more time, this time starting closer, and you can see after a bit of struggle it ends up pulling him right through. But now let's check it out with Scion's ultimate, starting off with the red Scion that's inside the blue base. He's gonna try ulting right past the gates, but as expected, he cannot do it. Next is the blue team Scion. Normally, blue team people can walk right through their gates as if it's not even there, but you can see that Scion's ultimate, even though he's on the blue team, is unable to pass through the gates, even though he can walk freely right through them. I tried testing it one more time, starting off way closer to the gate, just to make sure I'm not hitting the walls on the sides, but it does not seem to work either way. If a target is within Vagar's stun right in the middle, will Vagar still get kill credit? This one is quite fascinating. You're gonna see Vagar uses stun in the Yasuo chilling right in the middle, not actually getting stunned or interacting with it in any way. Well, at least not directly. And as he goes and suicides to the tower, you see Vagar gets the kill credit, even though he didn't actually touch him or interact with him in any single way. Quite the odd myth. And the final myth of this episode is a simple one. Will Cho'Gath get a stack on his ultimate if he were to eat Sion's passive form? Scion's passive form has had many weird interactions throughout his history, ever since he got reworked. So here, if Cho'Gath were to finish off the Scion passive with his ultimate, does that count towards gaining one stack? And as his HP is draining in his passive form, Cho'Gath eats the Scion and you can see at the bottom left he gets a stack. So there aren't any weird interactions with this one. Alright guys, so that does mark the end of this episode of League of Myths. Don't forget to submit your own myths to have a chance to be featured in the next episode. I've also finally released my own merchandise store, I have a link in the description so I highly recommend checking it out and if you buy any shirts, definitely send me a tweet on Twitter of you wearing the shirt. And also check out the previous episodes of this series and my other videos as well, I'm sure you'll enjoy them. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I hope to see you for the next one. Peace!